Hey everyone, if you look at the shielding pattern of MTAR, in latest June quarter, promoters have reduced their stake from 46.6 to 39.14%. Now, promoters selling their stake in the company is not considered a good sign. So I'm sure if you have invested in MTAR, then you would be confused when MTR has such great potential for growth, why promoters are selling their stake? Is there anything wrong with the company? Probably something that we as retail investors are not aware of. Personally, even I hold MTR in my portfolio. So I was also curious to understand why promoters are selling their stake in MTR. So in this video, we'll dig deep into this concept of promoter selling. There's a very important insight that I'll share with you in this video and we'll identify whether it is worth holding MTR or should you consider selling it? By the way, MTR has also announced its Q1 result. So we'll also look into it. Again, the idea of this video is not to give you stock tip to buy or sell it. It's purely an initiative to spread knowledge. I always encourage you to learn the art of investment and do your research before investing your hard and money. All right, let's get started. So I was going through the insider trade details and found that MTR promoters have sold investment worth crores. Look at this. In June month, A Menoga sold 75,000 units worth rupees 14 crore. Then D Anita Reddy is sold 4.9 lakh shares worth 92 crore rupees. Likewise, the promoter sold 5 lakh shares, 1.5 lakh shares, 3.92 lakh shares, and many more. Even in March month, there was selling from promoters. Now, promoters selling their stake in the company is certainly not a good sign because promoter selling signifies that there's a lack of confidence in the company or they probably don't see a bright future or probably they find the valuations expensive. But the question here is, who are the promoters that are selling their stake? Now, this is very important. If the promoters that are selling the stake are the member of the leadership team or part of board of director, then it is a concern. However, sometimes you also have promoters that are not part of the core team that run the business. They could be the relatives, colleagues, angel investor, or even institutional investors that invested in the company during the early stages and made good money so they can book profit for their personal reason. In that case, there should not be any problem. Always remember that. Now I had a look at the board of director and leadership team of MTAR and tried connecting the dots with the promoter detail. So first I had a look at the leadership team that runs the core business of the company and take the day to day decision. MTR is added by Shri P. Srinivas Reddy, who is the MD of the company. Now I had a look at the promoter shielding to figure out whether P. Srinivas Reddy has sold stake in the company or not. Because if he is selling stake, then it is not a good sign. So in the promoter detail, P. Srinivas Reddy has 4.53% stake in the company and in last 10 quarters, he has not sold even a single share in the company. Now that's a huge morale booster. Then I tried to look at the promoters that have sold their stake to identify whether they are part of core leadership team or board of members or not. So one of the major selling has come from D. Anita Reddy that sold investment worth 92 crore rupees. And when I searched, I found that D. Anita Reddy has given a declaration that she has received MTR shares as gift from her father, Mr. J.P. Jayaprakash Reddy. Clearly, she is not a member of core working team or board of director. The next heavy selling is from Usha Reddy who sold investment worth 94 crore. When I checked, I found that Usha Reddy was appointed as director of MTR in 2007. However, I could not find her name in MTR directors in the latest annual report. So probably she left the role of director. Again, not the part of core team or board of directors. Then third heavy selling is from K. Vam Shidhir Reddy who sold investment worth 28 crore. When I checked, I found that he was a former board of director of MTR. So not active anymore in the company. Then next selling is from Kavita Reddy who sold investment worth 74 crore. Again, I could not find a name in the board of director or core leadership team. So based on my analysis, I found that the core leadership team led by P. Srinivas Reddy has not sold stake in MTR. The major selling has come from relative of board of directors or ex-MTR board member. That means there's no need to worry about promoter selling. Now I want to extend the discussion of shareholding further. So always check that even if promoters are selling stake, then who are actually buying them? Is it FIS, DIS or public? Because if the stake is purchased by FIS or DIS, then there's no problem. But if the stake is added by public, then there's a concern. And that too, if the consistent selling is from promoter side and consistent buying is from public side, then it is a concern. In MTR case, when promoter holding has reduced, 
It's actually absorbed by FIS that increase the stake from 2.5 to 4.5 percent and DIS stake is up from 23 to 27 percent and now at 28 percent. Although screener is showing increase in public holding from 23.28 to 28.32 but it's mainly because the stakes are purchased by Plutus Wealth Management which is an investment firm and not retail investor. So there is no problem with increase in the stake in public section. Likewise, some people have commented earlier that Gokul Das export promoters have reduced their stake from 33% to 24, 20 and now at 11%. Again, you need to dig deep. In my video on Gokul Das, I clearly mentioned that its promoter is a private equity firm that invested in Gokul Das at very low level and now that it has made huge profit, it is booking profits. But the important point is that the stake sale from promoter is purchased by FIs that have increased stake from 4% to 12 and now at 16%. And DIS have increased stake from 3% to 10, then 26, and now at 32%. And public holding has reduced from 54% to 40%. So that's a very good sign. Similarly, in Avas, promoter stake is down significantly, where promoters are again PE firm, and it's purchased by FIs and DIS. So always keep this in your mind. If promoter are selling stake, then check who are the promoters. Are they part of core leadership team or board of director? or relative or ex-board member or PE firm. As long as the selling is not from the core leadership or board of director, it's not a concern. And if it is from the core leadership, then the question is who is buying it? Is it FI, DIS or the public? If it is FIs and DIS, then the stakes are going into the strong hand. If it is public holding is increasing, then check whether the stake is added by retail investor or the investment firm. The only concern is when the retail investors are increasing stakes significantly. I hope it makes sense. So coming to MTR Q1 result, company has posted a revenue of 152 crore that is up 67% year on year. EBITDA is at 34.5 crore which is up 38.3% year on year. Although the operating margins have reduced to 22% as compared to 28% year on year and net profit is up by 25%. Please note that quarter on quarter is not the right comparison for MTR. Now considering the fact that MTR commands a premium valuation, market expected to deliver much higher earning. And that's the reason after the result, the share price has seen some profit booking. Although MTR management has guided for ramping up of revenue over the coming quarters and expected accelerated inflow of order in H2 of FI24. And the order book is expected to close at 1500 crore by FI24, which is nearly three times the FI23 sale. So growth prospects are still looking promising. Kamni has an expertise in precision components for nuclear power segment that are highly critical due to the safety requirement. Then it offers various high precision products under space and defense segment with 30 plus years of experience. Then it has products in clean energy segment and is the only supplier to Bloom Energy from India as of FI23. Bloom is one of the largest and fastest growing player globally in stationary hydrogen fuel cell segment. Kamni has strong relationship with top players in each segment including space where it serves ISRO, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Then in aerospace, it includes Rafale, Tata, Thales and so on. Then clients in nuclear power. Then in defense, it serves DRDO, Hindustan Aeronautics and so on. Then clean energy client include Bloom Energy and so on. By the way, I've already done an in-depth video on MTR in the past. It is also part of my next multibagger series. If you haven't watched the video, I would highly recommend watching it. In the recent development, MTR has signed an MOU with InSpace for design and development of a two-stage to low Earth orbit all-liquid small satellite launch vehicle powered by semi-chirogenic technology with a payload capacity of 500 kg. Company has roped in around 10 renowned scientists from ISRO who have started working on various subsystems of the launch vehicle. So overall, I am very bullish on MTR future growth prospect. Although at current level, it does command a premium at a PE of 64. But considering the exponential growth potential in the coming years, MTR can still grow at much faster rate and would continue to command a premium. Yes, in the near term, there can be some hiccups, but there is no doubt that MTR is an SIP grade stock with multi-bagger return potential. So this is it for this video. I hope you'll find this answers useful. I'll see you in next video. Till then, take care.